Today we're going to break down the best indicators that I recommend as well as talk about how deceptive they are and how traders are using them to trick you. This is a video I've been putting off almost all day because each time I push record, I start fuming inside because it's, it's a topic that so many new traders going down the EA route, going down the trading indicator route will get sucked into and it's an endless bunny rabbit hole that social media influencers, especially on Instagram and TikTok, fuel off of. They gas each other up using indicators saying, boom, it hit the indicator buy signal and it took off to 100 to 1. I mean, just check out, we go to YouTube, we type in best trading indicator on YouTube and you can see 197 trades, zero losses. Come on now, get out of here. And I'm not targeting anybody, that's not what I'm trying to do. At the end of the day, these guys are just trying to get people to click on the thumbnail. But for new traders, people really believe in this stuff. And then they go off and buy their signal provider or buy their course thinking that this is a 99% win rate when it's not. And then they lose their money and then they go off to the next shiny object. So you have to understand this first before we start going into the indicators. This guy goes on to say, you'll never lose again. Like, come on, get out of here with that. The most powerful buy and sell entry where it says he sells right up here at the extreme and then buy right down here at the very extreme and it seems like you win. The 96.8% accurate buy and sell signals. The world's best indicator. Like, understand, it's a very deceptive business and I've been in this industry for like eight years now and it is a greasy, greasy business. I can tell you that for sure. Now, do I think that they're useful? EAs, chart patterns, trading indicators, that's what really what we're talking about today. Yes. Now, is there some magical trading indicator that you line up and then as soon as it lines up, it's a guaranteed buy 90% of the time or more? No, not at all. But they can help us influence and give us confluence in our trading to help us create a better trading edge. That is all they are used for, okay? to maybe help us determine if a market is in an uptrend, a downtrend, a sideways market, but more importantly, they are more used for confluence in our trading, whether we're getting a better entry, a better take profit, all right? That is what they are used for, not to say, oh, it hit the top of the Bollinger Band, we gotta hit sell. So what are the top ones out there? I mean, I went to Google and just made sure really quickly, but you know, it's the typical ones, Bollinger Bands, Stochastics RSI, the, the MACD as they call it. Now, if you wanna get more individual knowledge on each individual one, I would send you to go off and YouTube how to trade Bollinger Bands, but I'm going to quickly describe it to you here. Um, trust me, you are on the right video. So let me pull up a picture here. So if we were trading USD Mexican, and I did a back test on this just to show you guys how this stuff would work. And it's not as easy as you think, just sell at the top of the Bollinger Band and make sure these stochastics RSI is lined up together. And that's all you look at. Like, it's not as easy as that. I mean, I did a YouTube video on that. I will pop it on the screen, but it is back testing Bollinger Bands and stochastics RSI trading. And basically what I was doing is I was waiting for any time prices piercing above the Bollinger Band, like right here, how it pierces above. Let me scroll in. And on the Stochastics RSI, it was also overbought, all right? Overextended, overbought. So we are looking for a reversal here. And so that's what I was back testing. And so if you wanted to check that out, great. Now, I don't think your whole trading strategy should be completely going off of those two things alone. But like I said, they can help us add confluence to our trading. What do I mean by that? Well, let me bring you through a trade example. Okay, here is a trade on USD CAD, one hour time frame. This was something I wasn't using, but what I will do is I will plop these on the chart after my trade, and then I will journal it and then review my trades after 30, 40, 50 trades to see whether or not there is a better win loss percentage. If I have these indicators, on my side versus not having them on my side with trading the exact same trade setup. So this is a common setup that I will trade, trading the supply and demand methodology. We have lower lows, lower highs. Price is making a downtrend. 
But then we get a very strong move to the upside here with these two, three black candlesticks in a row. That was an indication to me that a lot of buyers stepped into the market. We broke downward momentum. We've removed these opposing supply zones. This is basically what it looks like. That is the setup that I will always trade as well as long as it's sitting inside higher time frame demand. But I added these indicators to see, okay, let me quickly redraw this. So, so that is the setup. Now, when it comes to the correlation, this would be a demand zone that was also breaching the bottom of the Bollinger Bands as well as oversold during that time. And then when prices came back down into it, it was also oversold here as that's where I would be getting filled as well as we're touching the bottom of the Bollinger Bands again. That would be a correlation with the two setups, having them interlocked with one another, having both the Bollinger Band setup as well as a RSI setup. So if you think about it, how you should be thinking about your trades, and I explained this in other videos, is imagine a scale, one of those old scales, you know, back in the times, you would put your coins on there and you could weigh out your grams or whatever. You're basically putting check marks. Hey, we're sitting inside demand. It broke down more trend line. It removed opposing zones. It's a good quality zone. It has RSI correlation. It has Bollinger Band correlation, right? So we're trying to have more ticks in the pro tab versus the con tab, right? And so that will be our edge in the market. Now, maybe I add another indicator to say the 200 moving average. What happens if I'm trading with the 200 moving average with the setup versus not? And then maybe after 50 trades, you will notice that there is a significant win-loss difference. And that was something that I did. And it turns out after 50 trades that I journaled, here was another trade set up. So after 50 trades, I realized there was only a 5% win-loss difference when I did have the Bollinger Band correlation as well as the RSI correlation when I had both of them versus if I didn't have them, there was a 5% difference in my win loss. Now, yes, that is great. 5%. I think everybody would love to have that. But what are the cons that you have to understand? Well, it took me, you know, three months to get two, three months to get that chart data of 20 trades versus if I didn't need those, it would have only taken me three weeks to get those 30 trades. So I am going to take a lot less trades. Now, am I okay with that? I don't know. Everybody's different, right? So does it really make sense for me to be adding that into my trading? Personally, for me, no, it doesn't make sense. Maybe in a year or two, but right now, no. And this could be done with the 200 moving average as that's a good one to indicate. Let me quickly delete this as the moving average. I like to have that on my chart all the time. Just to quickly look at to see where, what, you know, is price above or below the, the last 200 candlesticks. It's a good indication that a lot of people use the 200 moving average as well as the 100 moving average to help them determine the long term trend. Right. If you're trading with the trend, statistically, you will have a higher probability win chance than if you are losing than if you are, sorry, trading against the 200 moving average. Right. And what I really want you guys to understand is there is no best indicator out there. A lot of us don't even really understand how these EAs, if you go to indicator and you type in supply and demand and you say, pick this one order block, we have no idea how they're determining this as demand or this as supply. In my eyes, it doesn't make any sense. That is not supply. That is not demand. So you can't just rely off of these indicators or EAs to make trading decisions for you. It's a losing strategy and it won't work out well. Maybe it will work for a short time, two, three months, but more times than not, after you always see people do YouTube videos after six months, after a year, they end up blowing the account. But by the time you realize your account is blown, they've already circulated new people into the market and to take your spot when you leave. So yes, I believe these trading indicators can be very useful, but you need to be careful and make sure you back test first to realize, hey, that statistically based off of a 100 trade back test, a 50 trade back test, does this make sense for me to add into my trading? Yes or no. So that's really what I have to say. And don't be fooled by the people on social media. I mean, by all means, go for it. 
but you're going to realize and waste your time and money going down that bunny hole. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can always reach out to me on social media at Moneyball Austin. And if you guys want to know the exact trading strategy that I trade, well, then you can head over to MoneyballTrading.com where you will get your free training as well as an ebook that I will send you on the methodology. If you guys really did enjoy this video, I appreciate you guys hitting that like button, subscribing, joining the channel where I give you new videos, trading advice, trading analysis every single week, two times to three times a week. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Cheers.